John uh, Jackwish uh, has spent years researching and development improved approaches to health. He's the inventor of the most effective bone density building medical technology, which is now partnered with Tony Robbins and OsteoStrong for rapid clinical deployment. Inventor of the X3, a technology that has proven to develop muscle much faster than conventional weight lifting with all the lowest risks of joint injury. Uh, Dr. Jackwish methods are used in training and the world's most elite athletes and associations with the entire Miami Heat organization, various NFL and NBA players, as well as Olympians. Dr. Jackwish's book explaining his non-conventional approach to human physiology is a Wall Street Journal bestseller. And yeah, you were kind enough to send me a copy. I've got it here on my desk. Um, it, it, it's it's well researched and the interesting thing i found about it i was i was just looking at the book on amazon there's a lot of criticisms of it from people uh saying well it's not well researched yeah and it doesn't cite anything and i'm like are you stupid right. like did you actually open the book and like, like it's it's really nothing but a research paper is the way that i would define it um, right and, and the criticism has nothing to do with the content yeah. Usually it's with me personally. People are very upset that I'm successful. Yeah, which I'm uh, yeah, like I'm yeah. familiar with that too. So I'm used to that. Oh, yeah. Let me just grab the, the bands over here because you because you sent me a, a a little bit of a kit. So these bands are all that you need to um develop strong muscle fiber. And um in case you didn't see him on the cover of the book, like he's jacked AF. Um how old are you now, John? 44. 44. Um we'll talk about your approach to self-care and um all that stuff in this cast too so we got about an hour so you guys are really gonna like this but this stack of bands here um you know as a guy that's lifted weights his entire life and i've done some unconventional stuff um for for athletics you know like there was a gentleman by the name of charles atlas i'm not sure if you're familiar with the name oh yeah yeah so charles atlas um was a guy that that coined this term dynamic tensions and it was a little it was basically a, a, like an ebook that my dad handed me when I was like 11 or 12 because I was a skinny kid. He's like, here, you know, read this. And I started doing mm -hmm. push ups and all these, you know, dynamic mm -hmm. tension movements that are tied into it. And I found this theory, like what you use with these bands. And I mean, the cool thing that I like about this is you can travel, you know, with this. Like you can put this in your suitcase, you take it everywhere heavy. around the world. Yeah. And there's lots of places that, you know, like you can go around and lock down, you know, type of scenarios. And this is the bar that goes with it. And there's a foot stand as well. You guys can check that all out. Um, I just think it's a cool accessory. Like I wouldn't use it to replace my squat rack and the weights that I have in there, but I think it's a nice um, complement to all that. Um, is this what you do exclusively for self care and for you know developing right. a strong physique? Yeah, yeah. I haven't touched a weight in four years, and I put on over sixty pounds of muscle and lost about twenty pounds of body fat. Okay. Um, I in think my I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. If I'm being honest for, I don't know, like, what do you think would be reasonable? 30 to 60 days of just using bands just to kind of compare it to. Just, basic yeah. Things? I mean, and follow the program though. Like, like, you know, you, you got to use the bar and the play. The, the problem with bands by themselves is like, you go to take one of those bands and you throw it around your back and you go to do like a push up. Mm. your wrists are twisting outward. Mm. If you get heavy enough to be relevant for strength and you know, you could break a wrist doing that. So the bar and the plate were really necessary. My original plan, when I came to this, this discovery, which really had to do with my bone density research uh, in my first invention. So like in the clinical trial of that, it was like, I, I looked at the data and I was like, wow, like this kind of proves that weightlifting is a really lousy stimulus. Like we are capable of lifting a lot more than we do, but we lift very lightweight because we're limited by our weaker range of motion. And in our stronger range of motion, coincidentally, we're seven times stronger. Uh, uh, and what part is the like seven times stronger range of motion? Is that like towards the top, like, to, you know, towards the end of the motion or where? Short of lockout. So like, like if I'm demonstrating for those watching, like, like 120 degree angle from upper to lower arm. Mm -hmm. So like that, mm -hmm. you know, but like the back of my hand would be in line with my clavicle. Mm -hmm. and I can either absorb or produce the greatest amount of force. Okay. In, and that, in that 120 now, degree position. One of the things that I found interesting is like primates, you know, specifically primates like, you know, uh, chimps, for example, they've got something like four <laughs> times the strength of humans, you know, for the same amount of muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know why that is? 
Yeah, uh, they're very different muscle cells. There's uh, there's more uh, actin and myosin in their in their cells. Yeah, we're not we're not going to get chimp strength. And like pound by pound for pound, that makes the muscle oh. that much more oh, yeah. powerful. Well, like a rhesus monkey that weighs less than a pound can take its fist and punch through a human skull. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Don't own a monkey as a pet. Yeah. <clears throat> I've heard yeah. they're powerful animals. Do not yeah. mess with them. And, and once they reach sexual maturity, they're not your friend. So how did you get into bands? Like what, like I'm assuming that you weight lifted, you know, for a good chunk of your life, right? 20 years. Yeah. Didn't get, didn't get much. Out. I mean, yeah, I was in shape. Like if I was at the beach with my shirt off, people would be like, oh yeah, you lift. Mm -hmm. But I would have to take my shirt off before people would notice. Mm -hmm. You know, now... I walk into a grocery store and like high school kids will stop me and, you know, be like, Oh my God, like do you play in the NFL? Are you an MMA fighter? Like I look like a total mutant now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's just an, it's a night and day difference. Um, so I lifted weights for 20 years. It really didn't do much for me. And then it was when I was doing the clinical trial for the bone density device where the bone density device is really simple and elegant, kind of like X3, like it places, tremendous loads on the impact ready position so if you trip and fall like what i was just showing you with that kind of kind of push-up position mm -hmm. when you're when you got 120 degree angle between your upper and lower arm and the back of the hand is in line with the clavicle you can absorb or produce the greatest amount of force possible whereas when you go to the weaker range like if you're bench pressing with the bars on your chest you have one seventh the capacity so you're always going to select a weight you can handle in the weaker range of motion if you're going to lift weights. Thereby, it's really not going to stimulate the majority of the force capacity that you have. So you're really not switching on a lot of muscle. And even also, if you switch it on, that doesn't mean you take it to fatigue. Because I think we've had a lot of false positive excitement when it comes to uh, electron myography, like we mm. can tell when a muscle fiber switches on. It's a pretty, pretty simple way scientists have had to measure. And it's important in neurology too, because when someone's going through neural rehab, we got to make sure muscles are firing. The correct signals are going to the correct places so people can have normal movement. <clears throat> but firing and power, firing and, and, and stimulating growth are two different things. And so we were a little distracted by that. And also there's this sort of universal blindness when it comes to weightlifting, where weightlifting is sort of like accepted as the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then whatever nuance you put on, on a weightlifting, whether it's more sets or less sets, or, you know, you eat, two large pizzas beforehand because you're one of those idiots that think carbs is good for you. Um, you know, like whatever, like, like th there's, it's just sort of like the, the weightlifting is just blindly accepted. And I just took a step back when I did that clinical trial for my first invention. And I said, weightlifting is a lousy stimulus. Like we need to vary the resistance massively. Mm -hmm. So my first thought was bands and I was going to just write a book about bands because I was already busy with Osteostrong, I already had a big company. And uh, so, you know, like I, as soon as I did it, I was like, as soon as I kind of did the research and realized just using bands is worthless. And there's a reason bands have been around forever and they never really helped anybody mm -hmm. uh, with, with some rare exception, you know, some speed training and stuff like that where you have- You like just said that belt. bands were worthless. Yeah. So how is your band system not worthless? Because it bands by themselves will twist your smaller joints, your ankles and your wrists. Oh, so, so that's where the plate and the bar comes in. Right, right. It was the plate and the bar that needed okay. to be, be developed. And then once that was developed, I filed patents on all that stuff in uh, 36 different countries. And uh, yeah, then, then we were off. And it was super, super popular right away. I did, did a soft launch on Dave Asprey's podcast. Um, that was my first podcast. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been growing so fast since then. And, um, it's really, we don't really target the typical fitness crowd because the typical fitness crowd is not interested in listening to science at all yeah. or able, maybe they're not even able, uh, hard to tell. They might just be impatient and unwilling to read or on, uh, just unable because I mean, science is kind of complicated.
I'm just so, going to play this video here so you guys can see um, what it looks like to use this band and bar system. Video. Yeah. This is like basically a uh, deadlift that you're doing here. Yep. Uh, it's frozen. Why isn't it not playing? Is it supposed to be frozen? No. Uh, okay, let me drag. Oh, here you go. Okay, so now it's playing. Oh, okay, because it's measuring the... Um... Right, it's measuring the force. Okay, so rather than doing... <clears throat> like a deadlift with a bar with a bunch of plates on it, you're basically standing on that plate yeah. and and you're deadlifting and that increases the weight, you know, towards the top of the range. Right. Where you are more powerful, the weight goes up where you are less powerful. The weight goes down. Yeah. It ensures that you go to a deeper level of fatigue. Like here I'm doing a deadlift with 614 pounds at the top. Mm -hmm. I would never grab a bar with 614 pounds on it. How is that? How's that device measuring the the uh, resistance, like the weight? Is it? So you can see by my left hand, uh, there's something with a wire coming off it. That's a. Oh, sensor. I see. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah, that's not part of the product. That's that's just there. There. I mean, I, I don't have the load, so I'm just using. Yeah, it. that's just the product itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So. Uh, and that would be like a bench press you're doing there. That would be a squat. Yep. Squat. Okay. So uh, I mean, like, what about other? Uh, like technical move. Here, let me pull this out of the screen. What about like other technical movements? You know, for example, something like um, like a Zotman curl. Like a Zotman curl. For those of you that don't know what that is, like you'd basically take the bar and you'd lift it up and you're twisting the weight like this, which activates like the wrist and the forearm. Mm -hmm. You don't have access to do movements like that with a band system, right? No, we we stuck to basic barbell movements. Mm -hmm. uh, the strongest people in the world don't use dumbbells; they use barbells. Mm -hmm. And it's, a lot of it has to do, and there's, there's a great study that shows that you lose about 20% of your muscle fiber when you train one arm at a time. So the upper body likes both arms to be engaged. The lower body, on the other hand, is the opposite story. Because unless you're a kangaroo, you walk on one leg at a time. You run on one leg at a time. Mm -hmm. so we're very good at one leg activation and force production. So it's, it's really weird. Like you switch to one leg squats and you think you would just go half of your normal squat weight. No, it's more like 75% and you get the same amount of reps. Mm -hmm. And also you get all your body's resources directed into one quadricep and one glute. So you can go to a deeper level of fatigue. One of the things I um, liked about using it is um, like I have a, I mean, I don't want to say I have a bad back, but my back ain't great. Um, mm. I injured it a couple of times in my 20s, and it's never really be the, been the same. Although um, I've I've done enough in my life to kind of like minimize that. So ever since that, I haven't been a heavy squatter. Don't generally like do heavy deadlifts or anything like that. But I found mm -hmm. that with the band system, because the weight changes um, as you mm -hmm. stand up straight. You know, for example, like the weight gets heavier as you're reaching the end of the band's resistance, mm -hmm. you don't actually have any opportunity to injure your lower back the way that I've done before with like squatting or with deadlifts. That's right. Oh, here, yeah. look, I got a, this is I got a buddy of mine here who's, who's, a, who's, who's claimed to fame. Nice to see you, Ron. I'm, I'm glad you're there and chiming in. Um, he said 1,312 days in a row of working out and using X3 bands every week, not every day. And I think I get more benefit from them than anything. Ron's older than me. I think he's in his 50s now. And he's in really, really good shape. Um, fellow entrepreneur and uh, friend. But um, yeah, it's 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 great, I think, if you're older for sure. Um, so you don't have any kind of injuries. Because it, cause it's almost, um, I don't want to say it's idiot proof. But I think that you can pretty much, yeah, 58. Oh, no, um, people can screw it up. I promise. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure you can screw up anything. But, but the chances of you injuring parts that that are much more easily damaged with like straight mm -hmm. bar deadlifts you know for example with a, a bar and a bunch of plates drops dramatically right that's right yeah and like i said that's that's why the nfl was so attracted to this why, why the nba like they don't care how much they bench at all they don't care how much they squat they don't you know they're, they're paid to perform on the court mm -hmm. or on the field and uh, it, so, like, uh, when I'm talking to these strength coaches, they just think X3 is like, like, I mean, the, the Miami Heat, the endorsement's right on the back of the book. They let me use their name in writing. Mm -hmm. Like, pro teams never do that. Like, yeah, that and was, I know 
huge exception. You know, I saw Ben Greenfield's name, and he's very careful about where he puts his name too. Mm -hmm. uh, he endorsed it. So did Dr. Baker. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you had Sean Baker on your show? I haven't. No. Oh yeah, the carnivore guy, carnivore doctor. You should. I'll check him he, out. He's great. Um, I follow uh, PD PD Bangan on Twitter, and you know he talks okay. a lot about diet and exercise, especially you know for older seasoned gentlemen too. Mm -hmm. 